All right. I am Marwan Cameron, and this is The Conduit, everyone. I am so glad that you could join us today for another show, two, two in a row today, right? Yes, we did. Oh, man, we are doing the thing today. Today, we have a, a fantastic uh, special guest with us, uh, an artist, Dion Bonner, uh, who is a visual artist. And of course, we have Okuye uh, Vargas with us. So I'm going to pass it on to Okuye, as I always do. Okuye, uh, would you go ahead well, and, and take it Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Black Lives 365. Uh, we are here at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. We're in the bistro. We sipping tea, and we're talking with Ms. Dion Bonner. Dion, talk to us a little bit about the work that you're doing over there at the hilltop and over there in Tacoma. Wow, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so That's it's hard to know where to start. Maybe I'll um, say a little bit about kind of my background. Yes. And then I'll go into some of my projects. Um, I'm a visual artist and I've been working in the community for probably the past 25 years. Um, I am an oil painter, I'm, I use uh, oil, acrylic and lots of different types of medium. To me, it's more about the um, character of the subject matter that I'm painting than the materials, but I love oil paints. Um, and so I wanted to also show you some images of some of the work as well. But one of the things that has inspired me is integrating what I'm doing with me and bringing community voice forward. Um, and when I first graduated from art school, I actually completed my first series of paintings of African-American uh, pioneers of the Pacific Northwest. And that, that it really showed me so much about the rich heritage and history of the Pacific Northwest. It, it actually educated me on a lot of the land um, in the Pacific Northwest and how my people have con contributed to um, purchasing of that land, contributed to um, pushing laws forward. And so my family migrated here from the East Coast, um, Canton, Mississippi, and they ended up living in the east side of Tacoma and then in the now the hilltop area. And so, so when you asked me about, well, what have I been doing in Hilltop and what kind of have I been involved with? Um, one of the things is I was one of the artists that helped to um, create murals to bring awareness to a housing development company that's creating um, market rate and affordable housing for the community. That's amazing. And so that's one area. Um, I am not sure if I can see actually the PowerPoint, but um, uh, what I was, what I wanted to kind of talk to you about was a little of the other artwork that I've created. And one of the things that I, I make sure that I do is my intention is to bring forward the voices of the community marginalized individuals, um, situations that, uh, you know, a lot of times are outside of our control, but yet yes. um, when we or organize and we work together as a, a group, um, we can either bring awareness to to specific situations or we can, and we can help to change those situations by that awareness and by that those activities. And, you know, how important is that? You know, because you're talking about some, some transformational, um, um, creative work to undo institutionalized racism as well. So, so talk a little bit about that. Well, one of the things that I'm um, conscious of is that, you know, we all have our personal power and we all have the ability to change our own specific situations in our lives. Um, and as a community, when we come together 
and when we work collectively, um, there's power in that. And there's a power to move um, things forward in order, in order to see things progress, to see people's lives change and yes. to see um, a healing that might need to happen in a community, a healing that needs to happen that stretches across multiple communities. And so yeah. when I think about ways that we can do that, it really starts with education. And if people yeah. don't know their history, yeah. if they don't know that, um, you know, black men and women and other culture cultures in this city and our state have made lasting contributions to the places that they live, the places that they move and breathe and operate in, you can have a sense of, um, you know, not be feeling part or not feeling like you have agency uh, in your life and in your environment. And that really can affect outcomes. Yes. One of the things that, you know, that is so inspiring, I would say, about your work is, is how you engage the community in the actual work that you're doing. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if we have some of those slides, but, you know, when I mentioned my um, portrait series, that yeah. was the first time I learned about this history that I just mentioned a, a little bit ago about how, you know, there were black pioneers in this area that came from the East and they traveled like our, my family to the West and they made changes in their community, but they did that um, because one, they had a close knit network um, amongst themselves because of, of the fact that they had to survive and they had to work together yes. and they had to um, communicate with each other because of the situation in the times we're talking in the 18, you know, the 1900s where there was a sense of urgency to work together mm -hmm. as a, as a people. Right. Right. And so then yes. fast forward to yes. 2020, 2022. Um, yes. Yes, we still have this interesting way of communicating with each other, right? And and people they come together when there is a need. They 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 um, form coalitions, they form collectives, and they get things done and they make changes. Well, I feel as an artist, especially a public artist, a lot of the work that I do in the pub that's going to be in the public realm should be in inspired by the community. And so if I'm reflecting on, um, you know, the statistics about youth that have lost their lives because of gun violence, or if I'm reflecting on a community that is going through some very hard changes that's hard on both sides to really accept, I want to hear directly from the people that it's affecting. And so I go into communities and I ask them through interviewing, through workshopping with them, because for me, I want to bring out the matter and I'm able to yes. do that by talking with people. I'm able to do that by working collectively with people. And just the way that I operate as an artist, that gives me inspiration. I, obviously I can be inspired by anything as an artist and I do studio work. But when I'm creating something for public realm, the community and part of the fabric yes. of your environment, I really, yes. really want to be informed by the people that are part of either environment yes. or that are relevant to that, um, that particular piece or art. Um, yes. How difficult is it when you say you are going to do a community uh, uh, immersive art project, but not really connected to the people. It, is that a challenge? I mean, I think that most people are connected to the places that they're drawn to create work. Now, I, I say most because, of course, there's instances where 
Um, people can create work in there. They have no familiarity with the community. Um, I think it's important to, if you don't already learn what you can, research as much as you can uh, about a community, be, about a community. But I also think there are some misconceptions as well, mm -hmm. because me as a hilltop, um, connected to the hilltop through my family, connected to the hilltop through um, the time that I did live at the hilltop, in the hilltop when I was pregnant um, for a short while with my son, um, for the fact that I was a youth as a, yes. a resident, not, not technically a resident because I was not an adult, but I was being cared for by my great grandmother and at the time, um, that was what my mom needed. She was in a situation yeah. where she became a single parent. And so who who is there to watch your kids? You know, a lot of people have to rely on those grandmothers and those great grandmothers. And so my sister and I, we, we were in that environment, but yet because we didn't go to the schools and because we weren't at the community centers, um, we don't have the same type of memory of of others in the community and so i think recognizing that people especially for the from the hilltop area have a uh, varied and a layered um connection to hilltop yes um, yes we we're, we're displaced right and so when you think about hilltop and the creativity that has come out of hilltop nationally and locally, yes. Um, yes, we are, are like um, air, and we're in places that people don't even really realize. But we all come to this center, yes. central place that really was at a time, and it continued to be, but specifically for the Black community, yes. a safe haven. Yes, and specifically for the Black community, a limit, a limited space that they could occupy. And so I think that, you know, your question, I'm, I'm saying a lot, but I no, think your question is so important. It is. Yeah, because our connection doesn't go away. Like my, my heart and my memories of, you know, walking to Safeway with my grandmother, my memories of being in the Tom Thumb wedding, my memories of dancing in the living room, with my family who were musicians and artists and all those things, those were my early years. And so that is my foundation, even though yes. um, there's all this, these other resident places I had to live because of the, my family situation, um, that, that home is what connects us. And, and those early years is that's what develops our, who we are. Um, yes. So so yeah, I mean, I know I said a lot, but I think no, it's, I it's, it's your heart. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying it is the heart, and and it, how important is family? Because you you said you know home you know, is what connects us, and so as we talk about home and we talk about family, you know, I'm you know I I live in Kid Knight County. I live in Kid Sap County on the other side of Pierce County, across the bridge. And I have family right there at the hilltop at Evergreen. Evergreen and Dr. Maxine Mims, the founder of the Tacoma Campus of Evergreen State College, has created a community. And when I say community college, uh, it is a real community college. Can you talk a little bit about Sankofa and and what that that's all about? Yeah, I mean, I think you know our motto is enter to learn, depart to serve. Um, yes. And I think that you know one of the reasons that I decided to go to Evergreen um, is because you know I have naturally, I believe, because of my family lineage and our um, community service that runs through our character of the people in my family and the fact that we're artists and um, yes. and I think artists are a lot of the times interpreters of 
society, um, monumental things that are happening in society. And so I went to Evergreen because I wanted to be better at community work. I wanted to expand my knowledge of, first of all, my local city and my environment, but also I wanted to have a different type of a view that would um, in, um, influence the work that I was already doing and help me to be better um, conduit of um, gathering people together for the type of work that I want to do and that I hope to expand into. So I think it's really that, you know, remembering where we've come from and, and you know, looking back, but then going forward without um, worrying about what's, you know, what's back there, but being, being careful to remember that it's just important, but it also fuels what your future is going to hold, right? And yes. I think for me, that's been, you know, the most enlightening yes. thing is knowing that all the things that I've done in my life, all the challenges, all the things that I've been through are influencing the decisions of today and for my, you know, for my future. For the future, yeah. It's so powerful to, to be able to, to turn around, go back, and then not just to go back, but to go, to go grab someone and grab something and then bring it forward with you so that you, we can help uh, shape what the future will look like as well. Because if we forget where we came from, we won't really necessarily know how to move forward in a healthy way. Um, because we have to have a greater understanding of of how we got here, whose shoulders we stand on, you know, what has been laid, what foundations have been laid so that we can now move in. I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors who paid for me, who paid the price for me to have the privileges that I have now to be able to speak freely like we're speaking now. One, I, when I look back and we don't know that history and understanding that they didn't have these privileges and they sacrificed and they they shed their blood and they, they um, made a way out of no way for us to be able to, to move forward in a, a greater way than which they were allowed it. And so, you know, when we think about, you know, who we are and where we come from, our history, the sacrifice, plus the, the, the impact as well as the contributions and, and all of the, the things that, that we as a people have done to really build and shape this nation and for those contributions not to be forgotten or not to be erased or not to be uh, acknowledged uh, is important. Um, and that our children not move forward, not even know who they are or where they come from. I think that's important. I agree. It's it's extremely important because we, one, if we don't know our history, we're, you know, we're we're liable to we'll we'll be ignorant, and we could repeat some things that we really don't want to repeat, right? Or yes. or or not have the knowledge to tackle those things when it's already, you know, solutions are there, right? Solutions are in our past um, to help us with you know, what we're going to be facing, you know. That is so true. And so as we begin to talk about the revolutionary work that you're doing as an art activist, um, what do you see for, for our future? Wow. Um, that's a question <laughs> that I'm going to be you visionary. <laughs> you, you know, to me, many artists are, are, um, to me, they are seers, they are visionaries, they're creative, uh, you know, 
beings. And so I always look at the eye of the artist. The artist sees certain things and, and begins to create and be able to talk and make an impact with, with their art. And, you know, we see it visually. They pull it out of uh, of the the knowing and bring it right into reality. You know, they they see it and they say, oh, I know that thing. And then they bring it into uh, actual reality. And so can you just a little bit, you know, cause you know, uh, it's, it's amazing um, the gifts that artists have. I do, I think so. I think it's, for me, I, I believe that that pulling and that intuitiveness comes from careful observation and just being connected. And I think it's similar to what we were talking about earlier, right? About the way that we communicate with each other. And it's amazing the communication tools that we have today. But I think it's also important to make those connections um, personally, for myself, within my community. And that way, I am able to, through my work, say something. Um, because really, I feel like if if I have this ability, this talent, then, then I should be saying something with it. So I think it's, it's about slowing down for the future. And I know that seems so odd to say, but no, I think it's right. about being slowing down in our observations, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's so um, important to do that because if we don't take in um, our environment and the things that are happening around us, we're, we're liable to miss something important, right? And I think that's the main thing that I see for my future is that it, it, I mean, just think about what we've been through with COVID yes. and how okay. we've been so secluded, but yet that seclusion has helped a lot of us have more clarity, right? Yes. It's actually brought people to new revelations or to new things, ways of doing things, right? Yes. But it's because we're looking at things in, from sort of like a different point of view, almost like the, a different eye, right? Than what we normally see things through. And so I think artists have that. And it really, I mean, I say artists, but I think we're all creative, right? I think we're yeah. all creative beings. I believe that. And so I, I believe that when we look intently at our environment um, and not just physically look, but really see what's happening, like maybe in someone's life or in a situ certain situation, look to the heart of that matter, then we'll see how to innovate. We'll see how to mm. bring creative solutions to the, to the situation or to the forefront. So I hope that answers your question. It does. I mean, it's a lot that, that we really need to be talking about as we move forward. But right now, we'd love for you to, to walk us through some of the art that you have done and, and continue to do um, in our communities. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I think there's a... So that you can see the slide. So on this first slide, you'll see there are a, a few different portraits. And when I mentioned earlier, when I started my career, um, you know, I knew I wanted to be in a creative field. And I discovered that, again, through education, through research, through thinking about really what were the areas that I wanted to focus on. So I graduated um, with a degree in communications and design. And I gravitated towards painting. And my first series was to paint a series of African-American pioneers from the Pacific Northwest. And um, what you're looking at on the screen is um, six of those images. It was a series of 13. And what happened with this project though, is I graduated from art school. I went to uh, I've got, excuse me, I graduated from high school in Tacoma, Washington. 
And I graduated without really knowing a lot of the history of black people in my city. Wow. And now it, it could be just, you know, my, I didn't go to museums. I didn't have a lot of people around me that had that education. Um, so I just didn't have that knowledge. Well, when I was commissioned to do this project as my first project out of school, I started realizing the history that was right in my backyard. And it was amazing to know that, you know, a black man was responsible for, you know, helping to, you know, found a city in Washington state. These were yeah. concepts yeah. that I didn't know. These were things that it was like, you know, that person is part of my heritage, part of my culture. And they made these, long lasting and instrumental contributions to my state. Why don't I know that? Why wasn't I encouraged yes. as a young person to know that there were all these different people in the community that um, were in leadership positions in the legislature, um, you know, public publishers, you know, scientists, writers, uh, um, uh, accountants, teachers, founders of institutions right now and organizations that are really helping the community. So it was a huge lift for me as a young woman, uh, a young African-American woman trying to figure out what I was going to do in my career with not the best confidence as a young person um, and trying to kind of find my way um, it gave me a great amount of confidence and encouragement. So I always say that it's one of my most memorable pieces um, because I learned so much about myself through them. Um, and I really wanted to bring their character to life on canvas. And I learned that I love to research and I love to learn about my subject matter. And it helped me to develop the touch I needed to bring their character to life on canvas because I learned so much about who they were. And then this next slide will show you just a little bit of some of the studio work that I've done. Um, and I think if you scroll up, you'll see the next one. It's, it's another just compilation of some of the other work that you'll see um, in my portfolio. Um, and I pull on a lot of my family history and, um, and also other types of um, projects that speak to the civil rights um, movements. Um, and then you can go to the next slide. And just some more work that shares a little more of photos from my family. And um, these are the types, types of things that I have done as an artist because they're things that I wanna discover more of or there's something that I wanna say. Um, and then I will share the next slide. And a lot of the things that I started to do was discover, as I said, my community connections. I had a chance to um, create a mural as part of the Art on the Ave Festival, and that's on the next slide. And you'll see that this was my first introduction to um, sort of integrated community public art. And what this was is there was an art festival. It happens every year um, on Sika Avenue called Art on the Ave. And um, they did a call for an artist and I, I was chosen to create a mural on the pavement during the one day festival. So it was new to me actually, painting on the concrete like that. So there was a lot that I have learned since then. Wow. And it was, um, you know, it was working with the community and partnering with the business district and um, 
you know, it was just exciting. Um, so I did that. And then I did, you know, I had my life. <laughs> and so as life, <laughs> life would have it. You got um, that. You got that. <laughs> Um, life would have it. I, I, I ended up, if you go to the next slide, I ended up, you know, focusing on raising my son and, and raising yeah. my family. And I got, um, a full-time job that I'm still at today. And I began to do a lot of the union organizing and was wow. a union rep and was also, um, uh, a, a, a um, a delegate for a conference that we had in Africa, um, in Ghana, West Africa. Yes, yes. And being in the union, you know, obviously when we think about the African-American story and we think about African-American culture, we we can't, or we, we should know that a lot of that is tied to unions. Yes. Um, because there's, yes. there was, the way to fight for equal rights and the way to fight for our um, our communities needs um, a lot of times, you know, that was connected to the union. So when yes. I was organizing it through the union, I'm still a union member and I'm on a committee, but I'm not doing as much as I used to. What I realized is that um, a lot of the connections that we have to each other is okay. because we make those efforts, right? Yes. It's, it's that one-on-one -on -one talking with people and forming bonds. Yes. That sometimes while we can do that through the internet and it's powerful and it's innovative and it's what we need to continue to do. Yes. Sometimes we're missing it because we're not making making those one on one connections. And so being in Africa was more than just unionizing for me. Also, yes. it was yes. connecting to my ancestors and getting a sense of who I am as yes. an African-American woman. Um, I visited the um, Almina slave castle. Yes. I yes. Um, That experience gave me chills. I mean, I was, uh, it was, speak about it. Was, it. It, was life, speak about it. <laughs> it was life changing and it was emotional because I yes. knew that my, um, my community came from this place. Right. And yes. so it was amazing to me. Um, so yes. yeah. You know, and, and I'm glad you're talking about that because, you know, just connecting back to our roots and to the land itself and from those tribes and, and different ancestral lineage, um, you know, because I had the opportunity to go back to Ghana in 2019 uh, for the 400 year return of enslaved Africans to the Americas. And, you know, that whole journey, you know, to the river of no return, to some of the villages that um, was exterminated, um, some of the, you know, the, the, where the slave trade was, uh, where those castles were, um, you know, the entire um, journey was very transformational, you know, to be able to connect with that African diaspora and be able to connect in a way um, culturally. And we had some real, I mean, we had some, some real tight uh, conversations that wasn't always, you know, because they spoke about how the Africans, um, you know, the African Americans weren't um, real Africans. And, and we had a heated co uh, conversation about that because we are African. We were just enslaved and brought to this region, but we are still Africans. And don't get it twisted. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't get yeah. it twisted. And I said, you know, yes, we we have um, we we are in this um, region and everything, but our bloodlines and 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 don't ever forget that we were the stolen ones. We are your children that was taken and stolen from you. Yeah, so yeah. we, we, I mean, we got into some deep, deep 
conversations while we were over there. But, you know, it's so I was so thankful and so grateful. And I was transformed. My whole life has changed because of that return. And so when I came back, I had I came back with a greater hunger and thirst for finding out who my people were, where they came from, where they migrated from, you know, all of those different things and, and getting my DNA and my bloodline, you know, what what region, what peoples, you know, tribes, ancestors that I come from. So that's been quite a journey. And, you know, I, I know you were transformed as well when you went back. And, you know, this is wonderful work that you are doing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit on it when you said just being able to trace your lineage and being yes. able to, because that's another, you know, it's not really another, it's in, in coalition with the, the other things that I'm passionate about, and that's documentation, you know, yes. of our histories. And because of the enslavement and because of, um, you know, the lack of of resources or or prioritizing yes. um, for something that was actually not considered, uh, you know, equal. Yes. That yes. was considered property. Yes. That, Come on. That, speak. You know, we don't have the, we don't have that richness of our heritage where some cultures can trace back where some cultures do have detailed documentation of their lives, right? And not just them on a piece of paper as a ledger, right? Yeah. But yes. photos and histories of who, you know, what family was part of what family, their, their generations go back and we don't, ours don't. We have a, a, a separation. Yes. And so that's what that separation is about, that disconnect and that uncomfortable sort of conversation that you mentioned that maybe was had. That's yes. because we don't, we have a separation that happened and now we have to try to get that back. It's like we have to uncover yes. the, 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 the layers, right? And like, I think each person has to do that individually, right? Yes. Yeah, um, because also the African American experience is a very diverse experience. It's a very multi-layered, yes. multi-cultured experience, and I think our culture is so integrated and so yes. not just racially, but also um, culturally. And we have this this missing piece that then we have to almost search for within ourselves and internally and externally. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm so glad you said search within ourselves because you know we have to have that hunger and thirst within ourselves to wanna to know who we are, where we come from. And, and that is so vital to us moving forward in the future. Um, and so I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Absolutely. And so I I can talk a little bit about what's on the screen. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I can see. We want um, to know exactly, you know, all the wonderful things that you've brought us. And I think earlier um, um, the host was scrolling by some of the work that I, I did in the east side of Tacoma, a mural that I worked on. And so I, I did want to share that we have a dedication for that mural and that mural um, is called In Loving Memory and it is a dedication to youth that had um, unfortunately lost their lives to gun violence. And yeah. so the mural is for the community and um, that mural was another process where I worked with the community and talked with them, and it was it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing. Um, those are not conversations people want to have, um, but it was part of the process, right? And so, on the twenty sixth at eleven o'clock, they'll be having a dedication, and there will be people that will be talking about um, 
things that they want to share. And I, I just encourage people if they want to come out and um, honor their loved ones. And I think for yes. me, that piece and a little bit of what you were talking about just now, we have to kind of heal, right? And yes. that healing um, really comes a lot of times from, you know, discovering that we have things in common with people, right? Yes. And so yeah. I think um, maybe bringing people together for this dedication is an opportunity to, to do that. So people can find out more at the uh, Metro Parks uh, Tacoma website. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, because, you know, we're talking about in memory of, and we're also talking about dealing with the trauma because the trauma that comes with it and, and using this as part of a healing process with our being able to gather and really be able to create and, and, and go through that therapeutic thing that happens when you immerse yourself in this art and immerse yourself in creating and and getting some of that out and and onto the the page or or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. This is amazing. Is there anything else you want to share with us, Miss Dion? Um, I don't think I have anything else. I mean, if you want to go through the right now, you see a. Me yes. painting uh, the Design the Hill mural, which was yes. also, you know, community building. You've got Paint the Street, which is some examples of some more pavement art that I did with the community. And right now, um, this is great that this slide is coming up. Um, right now, what I'm working on is a BLM mural, which is mm. a mural that we're creating in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. So that's my current work that I'm doing right now. And I'm working with three other artists, Gwen Jones, Kenya Adams, and Charles Taylor. Yes. And for me, this project was important that I hear directly from the local Black community. And I yes. prioritized Black voices and Black vision because I really wanted this this project to be centered and, and as far as I can control, um, begin with reaching into my community to partner with them. And so I started first by partnering with three artists and these three artists are working with me and we're collaborating and we're planning ways of in, engaging um, the local black community, but we're also engaging the city and that's, that's our goal, is that everyone has a chance to get involved. And there's a few different ways. One is through surveys and focus groups that we are um, asking the local Black community to participate in. And then also other activities that will be happening when we're doing the actual, when I'm doing the painting, we're, we're working on some ways of having other people come in and join and some other activities that we hope will be really fun for the whole community to get involved with. Yes. And also community posters that we can put up in solidarity yes. um, for this um, project, because really this is about the protection and um, of black lives and, and for, you know, just celebrating and helping those people that have been through the trauma, as you mentioned, and yes. then you're now on the other side of that and healing. So it's a way of joining in in the same yes. way that this movement um, has joined in globally and locally yes. to say that we we want to tr we want to protect um, our people. So. Yes, we want to protect lives. Thank you, Dion. Um, <laughs> this has been uh, just an honor to be able to have you share your artwork with us and talk about the importance of art activism and the importance of community building and the importance of protecting community and being able to commute those things, communicate all of those things through art and engagement and community coming together and unifying to do this work. Um, 
we we're just so grateful to have you here with us today and thank you for all the work that you're doing uh in our region here in our state and nationally and globally and so uh thank you thank you thank you mr wow thank you for having me thank you for having me <laughs> all right all right. Uh, yeah, I absolutely uh, appreciate your artwork and your time and uh, the legacy that you are leaving on all of us and all the work that you're doing. It's interesting uh, to see how impactful art can be in the world. Uh, sometimes you just look at a, a drawing or a picture uh, and, and it's so much more than that. And it's, you know, bringing people together and healing. Uh, there, there's so much into the art that I have a new appreciation for. Uh, just this week alone. So, you know, thank you for your contribution. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure to meet you and talk with you. And I look forward to seeing more of your art in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure. So Black Lives Be 65, we just want to thank you. And don't forget, we have for our our up and coming community celebration on Friday night. On the 25th, we have our soiree with our young people that will be in Bremerton. They start, they kick off from eight to midnight. It's a Cinderella soiree. When the clock strikes 12, you got to go. And so they are going to be coming together, just celebrating one another fellowshipping and having fun. We wanted to do some healing. They'll have some art. They'll have some food. They'll have fun. They'll have music. And they are, um, we want to uh, keep our young people healthy and we want to keep them safe. So we wanted to celebrate them and honor them as well and have them just have fun, fun, fun. And so with that being said, we also have our Sunday community celebration at Bema, leaving from Bema. We will have a film by Miss Gilda Shepherd. Uh, since I've been down, they will have her. Uh, she'll be coming here. She'll be speaking with our students. She'll be on a panel. Uh, we kick off. We march from Bema down to the movie theater at the Pavilion. And then we'll look at her film. And then we'll have some dialogue. Kamanti uh, will also be online with us. And so it is going to be uh, a wonderful conversation to have. And, and you all are invited and hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So for Dion Bonner and Akuye Vargas, I am Marwan Cameron, and this is The Conduit. Please join us next time. Thank you so much, everyone.